Hey, you just watched this gentleman perform. John from Portugal, the man, is hanging out at K-Rock in the DTS sound space. And those are just, that's, that's what's happening right now, John. It's just exactly what just happened. I'm making sure you know where you're at, bro. <laughs> I, I Welcome to the jungle. Um, but there's a lot to talk about as we tape this. We're probably about like six weeks out from the album, roughly. Uh, June 23rd, we're going to get the new Portugal the Man album before we get into the title. And uh, there's a lot to ask you about in terms of collaborators. But right now, the K-Rock fave is, of course, Dummy. And um, I think that that's probably the most interesting sounding song from a production standpoint on K-Rock right now, which I always appreciate, trying something new in a day and age where, whether it's interpolations or whatnot, it seems like reboot culture has found itself to music. Uh, you guys are kind of going out there doing a, uh, something very creative. Uh, talk to me about the story of Dummy, though. Yeah, so Dummy was actually written up in Portland. We had our buddy Paul Williams uh, of Rainbow Connection, The Carpenters, David Bowie, Harry Nielsen, world famous world renowned songwriter paul williams was up there with us and we we're working on just i mean this dude is just so poetic the way he speaks like he's so inspiring we're having this like moment in the studio and we're working on new music and our drummer comes up to me jason comes up to me and he goes yo i think i got a bass line for this and he never does this like he never like just pops in it's like i got some music so i'm like oh all right i'm all ears uh, and he starts humming in my ear, duh, duh, de, duh, and he's humming the bass line to me. And just the way he went about it was like, that, uh, that might be a bass line, but that's something else. I've never heard anything like that before. So I sent him in straight faced, of course. I, hey, could you go record that real quick? I'm going to sit down. I'll try to learn your bass line. And Jason went in and recorded this, like, just this really, like, it was, it's so genuine. I mean, that's the thing about it. He's not, he's just genuinely like humming this melody. And it, 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 we were all like, it just made us smile instantly. We were like, that is ridiculous. Like, it's so fun and so sweet. And it being Jason, who is, again, such a genuine person, I just started writing this song around it. Like, I was really thinking about The Cure. I was thinking about these bands that like, embody this like kind of goth aesthetic and it's like the the subject matter of the song is pretty heavy it's it's everything that you you're kind of seeing through news and media and like oh my god the end is near but if we send it through this like cartoonish lens and this like all the imagery is cartoons looney tunes yeah um, so, so he brought that sort of melody that we hear at the top of Dummy if you've heard it on K-Rock he brought that to you like thinking you were going to make that the bass line but you actually used that vocal sample at the top of the record oh it's it just sounded so good to me like it just hearing it over and over i just never got sick of this thing like yeah. it had sat around for a while and i ended up going in with asa Taconi, who I, I wrote feel it still with um i've written a lot of stuff with asa just a really good dude uh, safe space to walk into plays in a band called electric guest uh you've probably heard their music and if you have not like you should they are an amazing group and uh yeah just went in i said asa i think i have the perfect thing for this yeah well it's so funny because sometimes i don't know if you if that was the first time you found yourself in the studio in that situation but you, you know whether it's splice or whether you're cooking up some like you know unique sounds you're trying to emulate what you can do with your own mouth and sometimes it's like no dude that's the sample you know what I mean? You don't have to find, you don't have to translate that necessarily to music. You can actually just use what you just did. Totally. That's my favorite thing about bedroom artists right now. Like they, you kind of have everything at your disposal and it is those sounds like it's banging on the desk. That's what Feel It So was. I Crazy. mean, dude, that was me and Asa sitting in a lounge at a studio. We're, we're in an expensive studio and he and I are sitting in the lounge. I'm, I'm, I'm out there. I'm playing a bass line. And Asa goes, Yo, Jay, could I record that real quick? Records it. No click or anything. We're just like, let's record it so it's free of anything. Like, there's no grid. Let's not think about that. And Asa starts banging on the desk and, like, making these whooping sounds. And then we have Feel It Still. And a lot, there's a lot of Asa samples on this, this record as well. He is the voice, the pre-chorus. If it's the last dance, you can count on me. Like, that's Asa. Yeah. Asa is, like, always doing stuff like that. And I, th I think it's just a really incredible talent that he has to create fun and find something where there's nothing. Yeah. 
Um, you worked with a ton of collaborators. One that stuck out to me that maybe, you know, like the K-Rock fan wouldn't expect necessarily with you guys is Black Thought actually worked on the record with you guys, who, of course, Black Thought from the Roots. What did he contribute specifically and uniquely to the project? Uh, Black Thought is the greatest lyricist of all time. I, I will tell you, I'll give you one quick story about working with Black Thought. We, so we worked on one of his records with Sean Kane, Sean C. And, man, we have recorded all this music. We're sitting in there with Sean, just Sandy Bodecker's studio in, in Portland. And we're working on all this music, making some really cool stuff, or what we think is really cool. Tariq flies in. Tariq is Black Thought. Black Thought flies in. And sits down. it's like 3 a.m. New York time. He's on a red eye gets in and he sits down on the couch and he's like, okay, let me hear what you've been working on. He's in Portland, man. Like he's sitting there texting the whole time. We're showing him these songs and I'm just going, oh my God, he hates everything. This is so terrible. Like it's that feeling in your gut where you're like, what am I doing here? And after like 20 minutes, he keeps just going like, okay, what's next? What's next? We play that other one again. Okay. Like play the next one, play the next one. He just says, yo, is the, is the mic on right now? We're like, yeah, it's right over there. And so he like sets down his phone, goes in, checks, checks the headphones. And he goes, hey, go to that first track. Start to finish. Delivers the entire song. Then he says, he gives a general time, which I, I, I just kind of blew my mind. It's like 2.43, like wherever it is in there. He says, I said the the authority is historically bankrupt. Take me there, punch me in. Punches him in. I don't hear. It is inaudible, the difference in this. To the end. Done with the song. He left his phone in the room. He had been writing lyrics on his phone. He wasn't texting. He wrote lyrics on his phone, committed them to memory, went in and just delivered, start to finish, what he had just written. And I've watched him do that twice now where, I mean, we all know, like, there's, like, a, a... famous freestyle uh, of his like this dude can go forever but we we played another show where he came out and freestyled with us on one of our tracks it was for march for our lives in in portland all these kids are there i just knew he was staying a block away and i was like yo will you come down and like rap with us so he comes down and again freestyles then he's like hey is the studio open right now We go down there, and I've been paying attention because I've worked with Black Thought, and I know something just happened. Word for word delivers what he just freestyled at at this event. He he is just absolutely incredible. Um, I want to talk to you about the title of the album that's out June 23rd, Chris Black Changed My Life. Um, For the unfamiliar, can you tell us about Chris the person, and then uh, what led you to naming the album that? So Chris, uh, Chris Black, we met him through A.G. Rojas and Michael Reagan. Uh, just this really great energy. I remember the first time he came to a show, showed up with A.G. And we've been around a lot of funny people in our lives. Like, I go see comedy all the time, and I've never laughed so hard. Just the two, A.G. and Chris together, those are like, yeah, that's the funniest moments of my life have been with those two. And this dude just starts sharing music with me just in general, like hyping you up. And we started bringing him out. He would come to events with us and and DJ. And so we're playing this event and Chris had just DJed. I was like, yeah, we'll do the event, but we got to bring Chris. So we bring Chris and Chris is just sitting back there. He's DJed and he has a microphone in front of him. And he just starts between songs. He's like, oh my God, can you believe it? We were, we experienced this together. Can you believe I can't believe this band. Did you hear that? You did that. And he just starts hyping us up. And we just found it so, like, we're all cracking up. Like, this is the type of guy Chris is. Like, he just jumps into this moment. And for those of you familiar, like, it might seem weird for a, a band to have an MC or like a DJ and things like that. This is Bez, dude. This is Happy Mondays. Like, this is my friend. He just dances, dude. Like, that's what he, he's here to just dance and have a good time. That's, that's what he was to us. And when he passed, so he passed a few years ago, there was this weird, like, fracture in, like, this friend group. And just realized the uh, importance of this, this person and these people in our lives. And 
what it means to have like your version of Chris and your crew, like that person that just makes you laugh and is stupid and also like checks you like when you cross a line. And that's, that's something that I miss so much. And it's what, what I ended up writing about was just family and like these connections and how much they mean to us and how it made me really introspective leaving him, losing him. And you never really lose that person. I mean, I still like recently in the last few months, I've picked up my phone. I used to do it all the time and I hope I never lose it. Oh my God, I got to tell Chris about this. And just a guy that it sounds like just from all those stories just brought out the best in you. Whether it was, you know, holding you accountable or whether it was making you laugh at times you needed it, you know? Totally. I mean, that's what they do. Um, one of my favorite factoids about Portugal the Man is, you know, when you score the big hit like you guys did with Field Still, people do all sorts of things. They buy cars, they buy bling, they buy mansions. You use your newfound cloud to hit up Mike Judge for the tour video for the following tour. And as a massive Beavis and Butthead fan... I got to ask you how that came about and just the creative process behind that. And for those that don't know, the opening video to that tour in 2018 was a Beavis and Butthead mocking the Field Still video. But what was the behind the scenes of all that? Okay, so I, I will give it to you. I don't know if this is like okay for me to say, but I will say it because I don't throw around the word genius a lot. I mean, I will use it. it it's, it's not really genius. He's just a funny guy. Like Mike Judge is very smart, very funny. Um, we just, I think he had been to a show at some point. And we were like, I, we're getting ready to play Coachella. And th this is the way I remember it. We're getting down to the wire. We're like trying to clear like th this. Like we're going through all of his people because we want to do it the right way. Like we don't want to hit him direct and like bother him with any of this stuff. But we're such massive Beavis and Butthead fans. We're such massive Mike Judge fans. And I just love what he does. We were getting down to the wire, and somebody's finally like, yo, dude, like, I don't think this is going to happen. I think you got to hit up Mike Judge. And I'm like, I don't really feel comfortable doing this, but okay, I'll do it. And I hit him. He had no idea that we were asking for this. And we were being told that it was coming. And th the way I remember this is, okay, well, this he, he was like, oh, I, I didn't even know, but... I, I'll get it to you. Like, I want to get you something. And he, he goes and he's like, what do you want? And I'm like, just rip on us. Like, dude, they just do your thing and like make fun of this man. That, it, that would make all of our lives. Yeah, you know, this is awesome. Uh, he goes in and dude, it, it was turned around so quick. It was like a couple of days and we had it back and he delivers this like yeah, he's ripping on the band, but then it turns around and he's like, this is the greatest band of all time. And it was such a hype video. And man, I cannot thank that dude enough for all the endless entertainment, all the inspiration for us as kids. Like, that's another person who we discovered music through. Like, we discovered music in like really strange ways growing up in Alaska because we didn't really have... Uh, record stores we did we didn't have a place where you could go find music you'd wait for your cousin's friend to like bring up a tape and they'd be like yo this is krs1 you have to listen to this and we'd be like oh my god minor threat i love it and uh beavis and butthead was one of those places where we would see him rip on these bands and we'd see these videos and he's one of those people that keeps you really humble if I hadn't grown up on Beavis and Butthead, right. like, it's easy to let it get to your head, but I've watched him rip on everybody, and you know what? He's right. It's classic. Now, uh, looking ahead, your uh, touring schedule is going to be unlike anything you've ever seen from Portugal the Man, but I actually think this is like a really cool way to do it, where there's less dates in 2023, but they're all at these iconic major city venues. I believe Radio City in New York. You're going to be doing Hollywood Bowl here in L.A., um, and a bunch of others across America. Um, what led you to wanting to do it that way, and sort of what's the idea behind touring this year? Well, a lot of, a lot of what we did with, with Feel It So, we ended up playing like we were on every festival slot. Like, every festival had Portugal the man playing. And when you do that, and when you're thrown in front of these audiences, you, you're kind of, there's this weird pressure that you start to feel where you're going, well, I gotta play this, and I gotta play the FIFA song, and I gotta play the other FIFA song, and then I gotta play the video song. And like, you kind of go through everything, you're like, 60 minutes gets eaten up really quick when you have eight, 
eight albums, and it's all music video stuff. And looking at these shows, like, and this record, like, this is, it's, it feels so weird to say it, but we sat down, we finished this record, and Jeff and I were like, this is really an incredible feeling. Like, this is our best album. I've, I've never walked into a practice space and played something for the first time and been like, I kind of just want to play the record. I want to play the record. I want to play old songs. I want to bring in some stuff that we haven't done before. And you kind of need this, like, jumping off moment of the pressure of these bigger venues, of these iconic venues, to, like, really bring it out of us and really... I just want to, like, set a precedent for not doing the same thing again. Like, it felt really amazing, and I'm so gracious for the opportunities. And I think this record has those songs. Like, those, these songs feel so great and emotional and so represents my friends and family and this group. And I'm, I just, I'm really excited to get out and play some music. Yeah. I know the fans are excited as well. June 23rd, Portugal Man's new album, Chris Black, Changed My Life, is out everywhere. Dummies on K-Rock right now. And then again, those dates later in 2023. Thanks, John. Thank you.